Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Katie, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Laramie and I will be running today's webinar on Common Core Math on CK12. We're so glad you've joined us. Before we get started with the main content of today's webinar, let's make sure everyone is comfortable with Zoom and the webinar platform it's on. You should see two different options on your Zoom screen. One is for Q&A and one is for chat. During today's presentation, whenever you have a question about CK12, please post it in the chat window. That, or sorry, backtrack. Please post that in the Q&A window. That helps us track the questions you ask and make sure we get to all of them. The chat window, on the other hand, is a place for a community conversation. Um, it looks like some people have already started introducing themselves, but make sure that you send those introductions to all panelists and attendees and not just the panelists, or no one else will get to see that you've joined us today. While we don't anticipate any technical issues during our broadcast, if you're having any trouble with your video or your sound, please let us know in Q&A or the chat window. So for each session that we've done this summer and fall, we've created a handy resource page for the webinar. You can find it at the tiny URL listed on the screen, tinyurl.com ck12ccss for Common Core State Standards. And we'll also put the link for today's resource in the chat window. You are welcome to print this resource page or simply save it to your desktop. We hope that you can use it after as a reference for when you are working on the assignment or using and customizing our Common Core Math Flexbooks throughout the year. So as we said, today's session is called Common Core Math on CK12. Specifically during this webinar, we'll be covering the following topics. Added interactivity in Plix. So we'll talk about both the Plix and custom embedded interactives that you can find directly within the text of these CK12 Flexbooks. We'll talk about the CCSS Flexbooks, which are currently being hosted in our 2.0 platform. So accessing and exploring Algebra 1 and 2 and Geometry, and we'll give you a preview of the middle school math flexbooks that are coming out shortly. And then we'll cover strategies for using these interactive flexbooks. Um, and we'll talk about that both outside and during class time, as well as the teaching guides that will help you with this. So to help us kind of figure out the best way, we want to find out if any of you have explored our book so far and what you're looking for in one of these new Common Core Flexbooks. You'll see a poll here in a second that will prompt you to respond to two short questions. So we'll launch that poll. And those questions ask, have you explored with these embedded interactives? So let us know if you already are using either the algebra or geometry books, if you've kind of seen that they're there but not really explored them, or you haven't seen these books at all. And then we're interested to see what you're looking for in a Common Core Flexbook. Are you looking for interactivity, guided discovery, examples, practice, or something else? You're welcome to select all that apply for this last part. And if you have something else that you're looking for, feel free to post that in the chat window and let us know. So we'll give you uh, maybe you know, 10 or 15 seconds to kind of look through that, see what it is, maybe a little longer based on how our answers are coming, and we'll go from there. So we're getting a bunch of answers in. Let's see if we can kind of wrap those up and get the last of those in there. And we will close the poll now. Whatever you've managed to put in there is great. And we will share those results with you so you can see them. So it looks like most of you have kind of seen that we have these books, um, but haven't really had a chance to explore them yet. So that's perfect. That's what you're doing here. Um, and it looks like kind of a lot of different requests for stuff in these books. Um, so interactivity, guided discovery, examples, practice, they're all in there. So we will be happy to show you what that looks like. 
So with that, let me talk first about our included PLICs. So CK12's PLICs, which stands for Play, Learn, Interact, and Explore, they're now included directly in the text. These have descriptions, they have links to uh, interactive content that you can work on right there, the related reads are accessible, they have challenge questions, and those questions kind of build to higher level thinking and open discussions. So you can access these directly within these books, and you can find more through browsing at ck12.org slash or through that little Plix circle icon on the homepage of CK12. In addition to these full Plix interactives that we have across our site that are now included within these textbooks, we've actually built custom math interactives for these texts. And you can see here that these interactives show up directly within the text. So they're simple interactions. It might be kind of including square root parts that you're working your way through, a graph, drag and drop categorizing, practice questions, all sorts of different options to interact and actually kind of learn the material through these interactives instead of simply using them to supplement that material. So as we said, the newest place you can find these is in our Common Core Interactive Flexbooks, and those are now being hosted in our 2.0 platform. And that really is because that platform is geared towards interactivity, and these books are fully filled with those interactive options, and so it makes total sense to have those within that platform. So the question then becomes, how do you get to them? So your two options are one, if you want to check out all of the 2.0 Flexbooks. You can look at that first banner right there and click Try It Now. And then when you get there, click Get Started and it'll jump you down to the Math and Science Flexbooks, including the three currently available Algebra and Geometry books. And then the other option is to go to the footer under Buy CK12 and click on Common Core Math. And that will take you directly to those books as well. Um, so either way, we'll get you access to those books. And we wanna start talking about what's included in those books. So the first thing is that these books are designed really with the idea of the Common Core philosophy in mind. They're not just correlated to content standards, but they include a combination of active learning, interactives, examples, and review. And as we've said, the two algebra and the geometry book are live and we're rolling out our middle school books in the coming months. So you will see that. We also have teaching guides or additions for each of those books, and we'll talk about that some more throughout this webinar. So with that, I'm gonna pass this off to Laramie, and he is going to dive in and show you these books live on our site. Thanks, Katie. Hello, everyone. I am going to steal the screen here and bring up my page from the CK12 homepage. First thing I want to talk about is just a little riff on what Katie said about the uh, Common Core philosophy. Now, the biggest difference between the intention of the Common Core and the intention of uh, instruction standards before that has been that we're really trying to avoid the mile wide inch deep thing and try and go deeper on specific topics so that students really understand how to apply the understandings that they're learning. And hopefully the platform that we've built here will do a fantastic job of making the resources that we've already had and the new resources we're creating be more available for, for that purpose, to make sure the students really understand things deeply instead of just having a little bit of exposure to lots of things. So I'm gonna start um, by going to our high school math flexbooks too. I'm gonna go from the homepage link where it says try it now. And this talks a little bit about the new Flexbooks 2 platform, and then if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that we have three high school math books here. As Katie pointed out, the middle school math books are on the way, and I'll give you a demo of that in a little bit. I'm going to start with the algebra book. And if I click on the algebra link there, we see the home page for the algebra. It goes through and shows all of the topics that are available in the book. Any one of these opens up at any point. We're just going to start with lesson one. And right away, you'll see when you click on the lesson, this is one of the big benefits of the Flexbook 2 platform. All of these resources here, these other ways to learn, have been available on the CK12 platform for a long time, but they were difficult to associate easily with a given math lesson. Um, you had to go through and find the specific clicks, the specific video that worked well with the lesson you were teaching, and then keep note of it so that you'd be able to find it for your students and tell them how to get there. With these new versions of the books, when you go to a lesson in the text itself, 
there are specific curated resources that we have picked out that are directly related to the content specifically in the written lesson that I'm going to show you. So it makes it much easier to keep everything that's uh, most easily tied together, together to show your students all at once. So if you click the start button here, this is gonna open up the page. Um, again, this is the very first lesson in the book. Um, just to give you an idea of how these things are put together, they all start out with some kind of a purpose, tell the student what they're going to study, what they're going to learn. Um, lots of, you know, kind of fun illustrations in the lesson. Um, a number of examples that just kind of explain what the topic at hand is and how it works in a specific question. And then right away here, you're going to see something, that, uh, something we call active learning. Now, the active learning idea <clears throat> is, stems from the fact that as a teacher for many, many years, I discovered that students have a strong tendency to avoid the, question, to avoid the uh, instructions, <laughs> just dive right into the questions and see if they can answer them. So as I was talking to our new authors, we realized that the more we could make the instruction be the questions, the more likely we were to be able to get the students to really understand the material they were covering. So these active learning sections are really the instruction part of the text, but they're written in question format. They encourage um, progressive learning, they encourage uh, productive failure, they encourage um, exploration, and the idea is that the students will go through the questions, try not understand what they're supposed to do at the beginning, and then as they work their way down through the, the questions in order, they'll get a better and better idea. Just below that first uh, active learning here, uh, first uh, yeah, active learning session, we have our first embedded clicks. Now these are the kinds of things that make these new books truly amazing for the students. Everything in each lesson has an interactive component. So we have our clicks uh, like we have the through the rest of the site, but this particular one is directly related to what the students were just discussing in the class. If they click on this, this is our new type of pl uh, clicks embed that opens up full screen. When we click on that launch, you'll see that um, the whole workspace here becomes the plex so that there's nothing else that distracts the student. But when they're done answering the challenge me questions that get them to work with the actual interactive, they close the window and they go right back to where they were in the read so they don't get distracted or get lost along the way. I'm going to scroll down a little farther here and show you another type of the interactives. These new interactives here were written specifically for the lesson, whereas this plex up here existed already and was chosen because it directly correlated. These embedded interactives were actually created specifically for the lessons. So the questions that have come up along the way are illustrated in these interactives and the students can work on these directly in the lesson. So they just click on try it, it gives them a set of instructions here and they can actually see what happens as the slope of a line changes. They can see what happens as the y-intercept goes up or down. And then you'll notice very common core-esque questions that go along with it. You know, as the y-intercept changes, how does the graph change? How does the table change? As the slope changes, how does the graph change? How does the table change? And everything is why, everything is explained so that the students are really having to articulate why things work the way they do. Okay, I'm gonna show you a couple of other examples here. I'm gonna jump around just a little bit. Um, I have a couple of other windows that I've chosen that just are different lessons so I don't have to click back and forth but you can follow along by using the navigation panel over here. Um, I am going to jump to lesson 3.6, Simple Composite Functions. And I wanted to show you here one of the neat applications of something that's kind of difficult as a teacher. And that's the idea of trying to get a student to understand the difference between a linear function and an absolute value function. With interactives like we have here embedded in the lesson, the students can adjust the slope of a line and the y-intercept like we saw just a minute ago, but they can also instantly see what happens if you have the same settings in an absolute value function. And this lesson goes on and talks about different types of functions and there are other interactives that actually have you see what different types of absolute value functions look like without causing them uh, the stress of having to do the specific calculations, they can get a feel for what these are so that once they understand the idea, then we can go through and talk about how to actually calculate where these positions are. Next example I want to show you here is a lesson on the quadratic model. 
one of the big things in Common Core that can be hard is trying to meet the standards of mathematical practice, which includes a lot about modeling. This particular algebra book you'll see has lots and lots of real applications of the mathematics. And this is one that has a great example of sort of a progressive interactive. This one starts out with just two specific factors that they can adjust. Um, this one talks about a speedboat and the blue dot here adjusts the, the uh, head start that one boat has. And the red button, uh, red draggable here, adjusts the acceleration of the other boat so that we can see how far out they are when they actually intersect. And then they scroll down and we add in a new function. And they scroll down and they add in a new function. And as, they, as the concept or as the uh, question gets a little more complex, they can see how each little addition makes a bigger difference in the overall function of the, of the graphs. Okay, I'm gonna jump to geometry. Um, you'll see geometry, of course, has lots of interactive shape manipulations. Um, the Common Core geometry book that CK12 has, again, was written ground up for Common Core. So all the things about uh, identifying congruency based on translation instead of just based on calculation, those are all in there. Those are all the, the design of the lesson. So those of you who've taught geometry and had to struggle with that, I think you'll find that this is extremely helpful. Uh, we have embedded videos. We have uh, lots of different diagrams, but everything that is Everything that references a diagram also has a related interactive for the students to use to try and figure out how the things work on their own. More of those embedded plexes. And I think, maybe this one doesn't have it. Um, one of my lessons here that I was gonna show you has some of the new types of embedded questions. I'll just show you those in the middle school math. Okay, so those are the high school math books. There are three of those books. They are already active. Um, many of the things that I'm gonna show you here in just a second that have been expanded in the middle school math are already existing in the high school books. Um, the teacher's guides that correspond to these are very detailed. They tell you exactly how the lessons are supposed to work, how to adapt them, how to use them. We're gonna, gonna go over those in detail in just a few minutes also. But beyond that, once we had built these three books, we had learned some things about how to incorporate interactives, and we really went sort of whole hog as we did that in our new Common Core math books for the middle school. Now the middle school books, Math 8 is completely written. It's in sort of post-production at this point. Math 7 is about 80%, and Math 6 is about 70%. So we're getting very close on these. I do expect them all to be released in the next few months. Uh, but I'm gonna give you kind of a preview today. This is the student edition of Math 8. Um, this is lesson four at the very beginning of the book, talking about the properties of rotations. Now, our goal with these books was specifically to try and keep the text to an absolute minimum. The teacher's edition will have more. It'll have more background about how things work the way they work. The student's edition have very, the more we could teach something with an interactive, the more we did that. The more we did get the students to actually do something with their hands instead of just reading text, the more, more, the happier we were with the way the lesson was going. So for example here, this first section talks about um, the fact that uh, a, a shape is congruent after it's been rotated. So the students go through and it says right here, these two polygons are congruent, they've been rotated. They're supposed to drag the sides and angles to the corresponding areas. Now, unlike some of our earlier uh, plics that CK12 has had, the new ones that we've put out actually have feedback that let a student know when they've done everything right. So if they drag all these things into the right places, that little hand up above will actually change and say, hey, you're a genius, you got it right. Um, so the students know that what they're looking at then is a good example of what they were supposed to be finding. And assuming I'm not, you know, yeah, that were, oh, not labeled correct yet. <laughs> so maybe I need to pay more attention. <laughs> but you'll see that the, uh, oh, I know what I did. I swapped the top and the bottom. Um, the interactive then lets the students know when they've actually done something right, when they've done something wrong, so that they can build on the information on their own and understand the topic as they move along. We have a new kind of interactive in the, in the middle school books that allows the students to actually try multiple different kinds of questions. These are randomly generated so that the students can go through and answer where corresponding sides are, where different sides are um, as they run through the interactive. Every question is different. Um, and then finally, the biggest thing that we've added in here are our embedded questions. Now, in, a, in the high school books, for instance, or in earlier uh, CK12 books, everything we had that was a question was written out. In the middle school math books, everything that's a student question, 
with very few exceptions, is interactive and recorded on the system so that we can give you access to it at some point. So here you'll see the students are expected to use this interactive and down in the questions just below it, it has specific activities that they're supposed to do with the interactive and then questions that don't just have yes or no answers, but questions that check to see if they really understand the topic and then tell them why it's correct and why it's not correct so that they can really learn from that. Again, that very uh, sort of formative question instead of just the summative questions. Um, and I think that pretty much covers the overall topics here. You'll see many of the new middle school interactives are very uh, much livelier than some of our old ones. Oh, and at the end of every middle school math session, there is also an embedded quiz. This can be assigned by you as a teacher so that you get a response to it in your teacher dashboard. And you can see what questions your students answered, how long it took, what their answers were, if they were right or, or incorrect. Um, and then you can obviously work from there to see what things you want to continue pushing for them or continue studying for them. So I think that about covers our main topics here. Katie, do you have anything else I should cover before I hand it back to you? Yeah, we have a couple of questions that came in about assignments um, and you've, you've hinted at pieces of this. Um, if you can scroll to the top maybe and show them where the assign button is for this particular section. Um, so that's right there. To answer your question, if you assign this lesson, you're assigning the text and the matching practice. Um, so that would give you a practice score based on a goal of 10 correct. Um, it would not, at this point in time, give you kind of all of that feedback for the individual questions within there. Um, we are working to eventually surface that to teachers, but right now your assignment is for the text, the whole page, whatever they're doing within that particular lesson, and the report will be based on their practice. If you want to sign that quiz separately, you'd want to go to the practice page for the, or the page for that quiz and do that. Um, and I'm not sure if we can see at the bottom of this, there's a related option. If we can click on that and open that up, um, the related option. So maybe this one doesn't actually have a related one, but uh, it doesn't have any assigned yet. Oh, so it doesn't have any assigned. This is the middle school one. So for the high school one, if we can go down and click oh, on yeah. related. Um, for any of the, in it, there's that, the clicks you can click on, it will open that up um in from down there kind of the matching clicks oh and i think it's just the way he's doing it um there there we go and there's an assign to class button there so if you want to assign clicks you can get a separate score report for clicks which is a complete or incomplete score um, but your general score is based on your text and then the score that's reported is based on practice and we'll see kind of what else we can surface in the future but that is how you assign that and what's reported out there. If you want some of the other modalities, you would need to go to the matching concept page and pull those up and assign them through that. And I will, I'll discuss it a little more in the teacher's edition section, but each of these uh, related modalities down here are specifically called out in the teacher's edition with links for you so that you don't have to come to the lesson here specifically and click on them to assign them. You can go directly from the teacher's edition to do that and they're all exactly the same modalities. Great, and then um, we have kind of the question about how to use this book during direct instruction or elsewhere, and so I think we're gonna save kind of those pieces for the next part as we talk about strategies. Um, so I am gonna steal the screen back right here and talk about strategies, because that seems to be a big question. Um, we do have kind of one specific question within there, which had to do with embedding parts of a lesson. Um, right now you could pull embed codes for our practice as well as our quizzes that are embedded there, um, like full practice and quizzes, and we will soon be allowing you to pull embed codes for our clicks. Um, if you want to use it otherwise, you'd be using it kind of within our platform um, as opposed to embedding it in another place. So let's talk about strategies because that seems to be a big question. So I'm going to just minimize these chat boxes for a second so I can see what I'm demoing um, and we'll talk about strategies. So in terms of this, we're gonna actually, sorry, my bad, we're gonna start with teaching guides um, and then go into strategies, but this includes that part. So the biggest difference kind of between the associated resources for teachers between the high school and the middle school is that the teacher's guides have more of a full pacing guide, um, the middle school are really the teacher's editions of that book. Um, so you'll see a number of class periods. You'll still see the same standards for both the learning outcomes, all of those additional resources, 
um, in terms of related modalities and things like that, and then teaching notes in both of those guides to help you with ideas for that particular concept. So that, if you're not really sure how to teach this particular topic or this chapter or this section, those guides and additions are super useful in terms of figuring out the best way to approach it based on how we wrote that book and we're thinking it might be useful. And so then the next thing is kind of some actual strategies. So we had a couple questions that came up that said, do I use this during direct instruction? Do I use this? Like, how do I use this? Um, so some thoughts that we have are using it in class. So whether it's you using it in direct instruction or really encouraging students to explore this topic on their own, they're going to work their way through that particular resource. It doesn't make as much sense for you to say, I'm going to read this out loud to you and not let them actually interact because it's designed as an interactive environment. Um, so really kind of saying we're going to work on this section right now in class and have them explore and work their way through. They can try out some of those interactives. Some of them, as Laramie was saying, give you, hey, you're done. You've got it correct. There's like an actual correct state. Other ones are more just explorations. So you could talk to a neighbor about that particular piece and what that might look like and then have students compare and discuss the ideas included within that part. You could use any of the active learning problems or embedded interactives as a warm up or an introduction to the topic. So if you wanted to pull one out and show that on the screen or tell students to start with that particular one, um, that might be a way to get students working on that, having a class discussion and then saying, okay, let's do some more work with this lesson as a whole. We could use this as assignment. So we, we did cover how to assign this content. You'd assign a section for homework or classwork. It doesn't matter kind of where they're doing it. Um, and it used to be that you assign the matching practice. You actually, the general practice is included in that assignment. If you want to assign any of kind of the other pieces like the embedded quiz, you'd, you could assign that matching piece as well. Or other practice across our site or a quiz that you made yourself. Um, but in the new 2.0 environment, that practice is included automatically in the initial read. And then for right now, while we're kind of working on options to surface more information for you about how students are doing on interactivity within a text, they could simply take a screenshot and share that with you to show you that they completed that activity or what that looked like. Now, in terms of getting students a little bit more engaged, they can have students build their own interactive in GeoGebra if you want to include it in a customized version of this flexbook. So one of the biggest things on CK12 is that you can customize our content. Um, and I'll have Laramie show you that when he jumps back in, um, just how there's a nice little quick button to click customize. And then you can mix and match sections in your chapters, all of the rest, and include your own content if you want under our licensing. So feel free to do that. And in that case, you could have students build and create their own interactives for our resource. We also have highlighting and note-taking features within this environment. Um, and that allows students to kind of pull out key information, make a little note about it, maybe include a definition. Um, and they can easily see all of those notes and highlights at the bottom right near where Laramie pulled up those related resources. Um, so that's a great kind of active learning piece, even in addition to the actual exploring and working with interactivity across our stuff. And then some thoughts just to differentiate. So you can use this mix of examples and active learning to help students explore at their own level. Um, you can even adjust, as we were talking about right before that, on customizing your own Flexbook and seeing what that looks like. Um, and then really encouraging students to try things out, gain an understanding, work with their skill level, and go from there. The attached practice, not, not kind of the quizzes or that customized assessment at the end, but the automatically attached practice based on concept does adjust to student understanding and progress. So what that means for those of you that are unfamiliar with our practice tool is that if students are being successful, it will give them more challenging questions. And if they are struggling, it will actually stop them and encourage them to try one of those clicks or check out a video or read that lesson that goes with it and really encourage them to take a step back, reevaluate their understanding, use a resource to learn more, and then go back into practice and try it again. Um, and so that automatically adjusts as they're working their way through if you're using our general adaptive practice. So with that, I'm going to pass this back off to Laramie. He can walk you through the teaching guides. Maybe he can show you where that customize button is and the highlighting buttons are. 
um, and we will go from there. But please feel free to continue to pop in questions, let us know, and we'll make sure to answer those as we go through or at the end. Okay, I'm gonna steal the screen here. And we're gonna take a look at some of the teacher's guide resources that we have here at CK12. And I have to offer you a, uh, <clears throat> a bit of a, uh, an admittance here. I actually don't know how to customize the Flexbooks 2, Katie. So I'm gonna have you tell me where that button is, but we'll get there in just a minute. <laughs> First thing we're gonna do is talk about how to find the teacher's resources for the high school, uh, middle school, or the high school and then middle school math books. So. The high school common core books again i'm going to go back to that flexbooks 2.0 banner or in fact at this time i think i'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and go in the other way where it says common core math at the very bottom of pretty much any ck12 page click on that it'll take us to that browse flexbooks 2.0 page and i'm going to start with the algebra one book just like we saw before and then here from this title page you'll see that under other versions it's this teacher edition. And I'm going to stop you for two seconds because you're right where you could click customize. Oh, so okay. under that choose option right there, uh, right, you have a customize button. And that would bump you into our editor. Um, and we have plenty of webinars and trainings on all sorts of information for customizing books on our site, both a basic one and an advanced one. Um, but the if you want to just dive right in, there it is right off the bat, and you could go from there. Great. Thanks, Katie. I always go through my own library, so that's a, that's a different pattern for me. Um, this is actually a slight misnomer for the high school books. Um, the high school books are really more of a teacher's guide, and the middle school books have a teacher's edition, but they're all called teacher's edition. So we're gonna click on that here, and you'll see the table of contents for the teacher's guide. And then all of the chapter, because CK12 automatically labels our numbers, books, uh, chapters in books by increasing order, all of the scope and sequence to so the overview things are at the end so that when you take a look at the the structure of the table of contents here it matches the student edition chapter one here is the same chapter one in the student edition so what i want to do here is go all the way to the bottom and start with the overall scope and sequence this is the scope and sequence for the entire algebra one book and if i click on there the first thing it does is talk about basically how the book works what the lessons you know how the lessons are organized the difference between an example and an active learning problem, um, talks about the fact that there's lots of interactives in these, and then the different kinds of um, resources that go along with the lesson itself, the read and the clicks and the printables, the videos, all the different kinds of modalities that go along with the lesson. Those are the things that show up at the bottom of, and I'm gonna click on the student edition here real quick. I guess I don't have one listed. I was gonna show you, but those are the things, these things here are all the ones that are listed at the bottom in that related content that I showed you. Talks about teaching from the text, tells you how to use the different kinds of act, uh, activities, the different kinds of questions. Um, tells, talks about how there's usually openers uh, so that you can kind of get the class started. And then it gives you an overview of how long the entire book is expected to take by chapter. So first chapter, there's 21 periods that includes two quizzes and a one day chapter assessment for a total of 22 periods. So you can really plan out your course uh, calendar early on. And as a teacher, I usually really appreciate that kind of thing. And then it talks a little bit about the midterm and final projects. And then the idea of, of some of the lessons actually have project-based learning ideas. And there's some samples of where to find those and some specific examples as well. So I'm gonna go back now to that table of contents. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to click on one of the specific chapters. Now we looked at a couple of lessons in chapter one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on chapter one. And you'll see here, this is that overall pacing guide again. The chapter summary here shows all the different lessons that are in chapter one, and then links to each of the pages for them, links to each of the standards that are covered in each of those lessons, and then all of those related modalities, as well as supplemental exercises that can be printed out and handed to your students, and the supporting solutions for those. Now, these aren't really quiz questions, these are more like additional, uh, additional study questions, the kind of thing you could send home for homework. And then you have the solutions for them as well. Then I'm going to show you here the chapter scope and sequence. So this is the chapter correlation to the first page we saw. Click on this. This gives you more of a detailed view of that page we just took a look at here, all the way down through the chapter one lesson at a time. And then down here under the expected teaching duration, this is where you'll find the one day chapter assessment. 
each chapter under the chapter overview has the chapter assessment and then the solutions for this chapter assessment and for the supplemental exercises are all in that overview of the book, uh, the book overview, the book uh, teaching guide. Uh, sorry, the book scope and sequence. That was what I was looking for, the first page we saw. Then if I go back here and pick a specific guide, if we go to say lesson one, this is the first one that we saw with the picture of the wizard on it. You'll see that it specifically details the standards that are gone over, the vocabulary that's covered in the lesson, talks about what the learning outcomes are, the specific mathematical practices that were sort of targeted by this lesson. There isn't always one here. Um, if there's one or more that we feel were really specifically hit well uh, by a, a lesson, we'll put them in that list. There isn't always one there. Though. Gives you the purpose of the lesson and then some suggestions for how actually to implement it. This particular one is a two class period lesson. So the first thing you do is read the introduction, have the students work on the examples, one through three. The active learning questions are expected to take about 20 minutes. That's problems one through five. There's a plix there that are expected to spend about 10 minutes and you have the links so that you can assign it to the students directly if you want. So each of the lessons has a very detailed guide for how to implement it as a teacher. Furthermore, every single lesson has an author written set of teaching notes. These are fantastic. This tells you exactly why each of the example questions was chosen by the author, um, what that lesson is supposed to hit as far as the student's understanding, uh, what to make sure the students should really differentiate. They're guided to, for instance, here, they're, uh, they're, says they're guided to an informal understanding of linear and function. So you know specifically what kinds of things your students are supposed to take away from any given section and any given question in the lesson. So really just a fantastic resource as a teacher. So this one is the algebra book. Um, let's go back to, actually I'm gonna do that bottom of the page link again. I'm gonna go back and take a look at the geometry one. So we'll go to Browse Flexbooks, Interactive Geometry, Teacher Edition. Very similar layout. The only difference with the geometry is that there is a specific section for the midterm and a specific, specific section for the final. These are both huge projects. Um, I, I would venture to say you could actually probably take a good week for either one of them if you really wanted to. Um, there's details, uh, the final project I believe is a space planning project where the students have to learn how to use geometry to actually uh, plan this, the uh, layout of an entire house. And then the midterm project is uh, an art project where they use uh, um, lots of detailed geometric design. And again, very, very detailed, um, lots of interactives in both of those as well. We're gonna go down to the teaching its course section, just like we did in the algebra. This is the overview of the course. Again, reviews all the different kinds of interactives, tells you how to use the book. You'll see here, this has that link to the chapter assessments. This is all of the chapter tests are here, but pretty hard for a student to stumble across accidentally. That was our goal so that you can have a reasonable belief that the students probably didn't have access to those answers early on. And then again, overview how long we expect each section to take, semester assessment, semester two, final, <clears throat> and then a description of the midterm and final. Uh, projects here. Then I'll go back up to the top real quick and skip down to one of the chapter pacing guides. I'm just going to pick a specific lesson here. You'll see very similar format to the algebra. Talks about any focus standards, talks about the learning outcomes, uh, talks about the actual scheduling for the lesson, and then any supportive resources. Again, these all match those embedded resources in the student lesson. So if you decide you want to use this real world activity, um, you'll have the information right here for you to see it, see what it's about, but the students will already have access to it in the student, student uh, version of the book. You can just tell them to click on it. So that's the high school books. Katie, is there anything else about the high school books that I should cover before I move on to the middle school? No, I think we're good. Let's see the middle school. Okay. We took a quick look at the middle school student edition uh, for the lesson properties of rotations. And I was pointing out that there is a minimum amount of text here. Everything is supposed to be interactive as much as absolutely possible. Um, the questions that the student sees are all part of this embedded interactive question review. The quiz at the end also embedded. But as a teacher, while that's great to have your students do it, it's not as easy for you to navigate. <laughs> so you'll see in the teacher's edition, 
of the same book, of the same lesson here. First of all, it starts off with the standards and has links to all the standards and their descriptions. Gives you the learning objectives for the lesson, a similar agenda to what we had in the teacher's guides for the high school. Tells you how long each individual activity is expected to take. Um, talks about you know what the students are what the students are seeing here, what the students are studying, and then shows you what their interactives are like. And then everything that the students see verbatim, word for word, the same is in purple in the teacher's guide. So that if the students say, you know, I don't understand what they're talking about when they say center rotation, you and your guide can see right away what it is they're looking at because if it's purple text, that's word for word what they see. Obviously, they don't see this stuff about allow students five minutes to answer the questions. That's not in the student guide. But the teacher's guide then lets you kind of follow along where they are so that you can have your version open while, have the, while they have their version open and you'll have all the resources to things you need. Now this is that first, if we look at the properties of rotations here in the student version, let me scroll up to here real quick, all right here, this is rotation investigation from the student side. And the properties of rotations is that interactive with the two different uh, trapezoids here. In the teacher's version, we see that as activity two, properties of rotations, same name for the interactive, but instead of seeing all those questions as an interactive where you have to click on each one to see the next question, you see the actual word for word what the students see in the question and then word for word what the answer is supposed to be. So again, if the students don't understand something about the wording in a question, you can say, was that the third question? Were you talking about where it talks about blue trapezoids? You'll know right away exactly what's going on and you don't have to click through that interactive to see it. Um, all those resources are immediately available to you. I scroll down a little farther, same interactive the student sees. This is all word for word. Uh, reminds you to give them a little time to solve the problems here. And then again, same things the student sees. And then at the very end here, this is where that quiz is in the student side. Instead of embedding the quiz itself, I gave you the link so that you can click on that link, go to the quiz page here and assign it directly to your class so that you can get the report on that quiz in your teacher dashboard. All the middle school teacher's guides will be very similar to this, uh, teacher's editions, sorry, will be very similar to this. The layout is uh, pretty consistent. And I believe we're gonna find that that works out pretty well. I've used these with a couple of sample classes and I, uh, I found it very easy to kind of follow along with the students with this particular layout. So that's the difference. Teacher's versions for the high school books are teacher's guides. They kind of give you the structure. Teacher's editions for this middle school books are going to be actual teacher's editions. They're the same text, but they have the teacher's kind of content added into them. And I think that's about all I have here, Katie. Anything else that I should cover? Um, we're starting to get a couple of questions on customizing, so maybe we can walk through that a little bit. Um, sure. The biggest thing, if you're gonna go back to kind of the book level for there, um, if I you choose- a high school book. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Um, if you choose, so if you want to customize a flexbook, can it be translated? Is the current question. Um, the short version is you are welcome to write and then change that text yourself. So if you go down and you click customize, um, and then it's just kind of an FYI on what's new in the 2.0 versus old versions, and then you can actually adjust from there. You can delete sections, you can rearrange sections, but if we pick a random section there and actually go into the section itself, you can see that you can edit the text itself. Um, and so here's a case where once you kind of pick your title, um, and then I often add demo or we recommend, you know, like if it's just a section, you can leave it the title as is, but for the book, we recommend you put something like your school name or something in it. So when you when you're looking at it originally and you choose customize, it will make a copy and put that copy in your library. So you'll be able to find your copy in your library kind of as Laramie referenced earlier. Um, but here you can go in and you can change that text. So you can write that in whatever language you wanted. We do have a built-in Google Translate option at the bottom of most of our pages of our site um, that would change the text kind of for the page as a whole. It gets a little tricky if you're trying to do it section by section um, and the frame is in English and the text inside you've written in another language. Um, it doesn't really like trying to read two different languages as it translates. So you do need to be a little bit careful about a process. So feel free to email support and we can talk to you about some best practices if you wanted to translate content. 
Um, if you simply wanted the content automatically translated from the English, then that option works from the bottom. It is Google Translate. It is not a perfect translation. It is great as a reference, um, but it's not a perfect translation. And it reads primarily the main text. It isn't necessarily going to read all of the interactivity components and translate those, but it would give you kind of a starting place to work off of. Um, so hopefully that answers your translating and customizing questions that are in here um, and gives you an idea that it really is that simple that you click customize, pick a section, go into it, and you can start messing and playing around with it. Um, so Laramie, do you want to answer the next question that's in there? I had another question here. Someone was asking if the final assessment is graded. And yes, it absolutely is. Um, the reason we put the links for those assessments in there, um, for instance, if I go back to that middle school map eight teacher's guide, um, at the bottom, I pointed out that there's kind of a link, this figure lesson doesn't have it yet, but there's a link down here under uh, review questions that takes you to that quiz page. From there, if you assign it to your students, you'll get the, re the response back in your teacher dashboard as far as what their answers were for the quiz. In the high school books, we don't need to be editing this one anymore. In the high school books, those resources for any tests or quizzes are all listed in your uh, teacher's guide in the, the uh, pacing guide for the individual lessons. Great, so it looks like at this point in time, we don't have any other questions in Q&A. Um, I think we've done a good job of replying to them accordingly and answering them as we go. Um, we're going to talk about a couple other things um, and give you, you know, the next five or so minutes to toss some more questions in there if you have any other questions. Um, and we're happy to stay on and answer those or walk through anything specific if you want to see something again. Um, so feel free to use that Q&A or the chat window um, and let us know some things that would be useful. But in the meantime, I'm going to um, answer a couple questions that are just coming in. And I'm going to steal the screen at the same time. And we're going to talk about something that's next right after that. Um, but I do want to answer this question that just came in about Canvas. Um, so one thing you should be aware of is that these new Flexbooks are currently available in the 2.0 platform and we are working on getting that integration up and running for Canvas. It's currently available for um, CK12 classes and for Google Classroom. Um, if you are trying to assign this content, the, the three high school math books that are out already and you need to do it through Canvas, just email us and we'll give you an alternate link to be able to do that right now. Um, so hopefully that would give you a chance to assign that work through Canvas. Um, and it would, anything that you assign within a learning management system that's integrated or to Google Classroom or within CK12, you would find all of those answers and reports within that platform. So you wouldn't want to create kind of a separate piece in CK12. You would just do it through Canvas or you would do it in Google Classroom. Um, so just keep that in mind. But if you are using Canvas and you need to access this, um, content before we make it available, um, the 2.0 environment available on Canvas, then just shoot us an email and we'll work that out with you for right now. Um, so just know that piece. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some other parts here. So I want to start with our tools and apps page. So you can find this in the footer, just like where Laramie was pulling up that Common Core Math option right near that is a link to tools and apps. Um, and that does give you some information. So we just mentioned Canvas. If you click on Assign, you'll see CK12 or Google Classroom. Some of these other ones are places that have pieces of integration based on what they allow from their site and what we can build into that. Clever and ClassLink are single sign-on options. Um, and then we have a couple of apps, um, specifically offline options for our simulations for our physics sims and a practice app, which is great um, if your kids are just trying to do general practice, um, not necessarily the 2.0 yet, because we're working on, we just launched 2.0 and we're just launching these resources. And so they're kind of slowly getting the full capabilities with them. So eventually you'll get to see the ability to see some of those parts. Um, but if you're using any of the other resources on our site, those apps might be useful as well. And then we've talked a lot about these other like related modalities and some people know what the word modality is because they use it in their class all the time and other people aren't always sure what that means. 
really we're talking about different ways to learn. We're talking about that interactive learning, that practice, applications, videos, all these different pieces. Um, and our overview page gives you kind of an idea of a quick little description on what that topic is and then a video that has teachers and students talking about using that content within their class. Um, and there's even a quick little kind of general PDF flyer that you can download with a reference to all those pieces. Um, so I highly recommend you do that. It's in the footer under CK12 resources, um, since it is the CK12 resource overview or ck12.org slash overview. So feel free to access that accordingly. And that gives you kind of a broader idea of what is available on CK12. If you want to know more about adaptive practice and assignments, and making those your own, figuring out how to make those final assessments. If you like our final assessments, but you wanna change them somewhat, um, and you wanna make your own, then that would be a place to do that. So feel free to join us right after the Thanksgiving holiday in the States. Um, I know some of you don't have Thanksgiving, and some of you celebrate Thanksgiving at another time. Um, but we will be back after that to do customizing practice. And then we'll do one more webinar before the new year, and that is on teaching strategies. And that's another really good one that talks about kind of ways to use CK12 in your class. So if you're starting to wrap your head around that, but you really want us to go more in depth on using CK12 supplementally or as core curriculum and really diving into actual strategies, then that's a great one to join us for. And tomorrow, this recording of today's webinar will be available on that same page. So you can always go back and check that out. Um, if you are looking at the adaptive practice one, you might want to also check the recording of the getting started one just to give you a starting place for that particular webinar. We mentioned that at the beginning, but our resource for this particular thing is tinyurl.com slash ck12ccss. It gives you some little bullet point reminders of stuff that we talked about today, how to access certain things, a little quick FYI on customizing that part, um, and it continues on from there in terms of assigning pieces and other parts. So definitely check out that resource. That will be a great reference both now and in the future. And then for those that don't know already and haven't already signed up, each summer we run an intensive professional development program for educators that wanna become CK12 certified. To do that, they attend a series of five or more live webinars, they watch two on-demand sessions, they complete the matching assignments. Um, so if you're interested in becoming certified during the school year by attending some of these live webinars, today's session does count towards that live session requirement. Um, you'll get a link to the assignment for this in about 24 hours when we send you our follow-up email. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, and you can find out more information at ck12.org slash certified. So if you decide to do the whole Certified Educator Program, we'll issue your certificate and documentation at the end. If, however, you're just doing kind of a one-off or a couple webinars here or there, please feel free to email jumpstart at ck12.org and we'll happily issue you documentation so you can take it to your school and tell them that you joined us for this training today. Before we end the webinar, we encourage everyone that attends any of our webinars to give us some feedback. You can find the link to do so at CK12 webinar 1819 for the 1819 school year. Um, and that just helps us really get an idea of what was helpful for you today, what we can improve on this webinar for next time, um, and kind of continue to build on these and make them better and more applicable to what you guys are looking for. So that is the end of our core content. I know we have been getting some questions in there, so we're going to bump back over and answer some questions and make sure that we're good to go. But we want to thank you for joining us. Um, you can email us at jumpstart or you can email support at ck12.org um, and we can help you that way. You can also kind of, if you're doing something really cool in your class, we love seeing how that's happening. So feel free to join us and post things on Facebook or Twitter or anything like that. Um, CK12 Foundation is the general one, and then CK12 Certified is for those of you guys that are in the certification program. So that's it for the core programming. Let's kind of jump back over and see if we can answer some of these questions. We had a question um, kind of about classes on CK12 or classes on um, Google Classroom or Canvas or something like that. And so I just want to reiterate something that I might have mentioned in here. If not, I mention it every time I do practice webinars. 
And that's the idea that if you are using Google Classroom, Canvas, or Schoology, you should not create a separate class in CK12. You'd want to actually just create that class within Google Classroom or Canvas or Schoology and assign content there. And that way, your students have one clean place to access their work and you have one clean place to get all of their scores and you're not trying to figure out where you assign what and how that goes. Um, and then in terms of what you're doing for this particular piece, we had one last question about the Certified Educator Program and that link will help you from there or you can email us at Jumpstart. So I think at this point we're out of questions. We'll give you guys a chance for a minute um, it looks like we have a couple questions about unified whole class reports. Um, and the answer to that, let me see if I can share my screen um, and go from here for one sec. I'm going to swap out and switch over to a new share for a second. Um, I want to just show you guys a couple pieces. So from here, it looks like you guys can see this is an example for a book. Um, if you're trying to get a whole class report within CK12, you can go to your classes. You can then pick a class, let's say, for example, this particular class right here, and go to reports. And you'll be able to see content at this particular resource. So you'll see, okay, they've worked on certain pieces. You can actually download a CSV file if you need to export that elsewhere. Um, and let's see if I can work on this for a bit. Um, let me stop sharing for a split second, um, or I'm going to swap back to the keynote and see if I can update this link. We are beta testing some options for showing you new reports, so we will see if we can get that particular piece. Um, and I can show you what that might look like, so I'm just going to swap over to here. So share. So we are doing more kind of accessing reports as a whole. So you'll start seeing this down the road. Um, if you're interested in seeing something that looks more like this for Google Classroom or CK12 classes, feel free to email us and we can talk to you about options for looking at this and giving us some feedback before we launch it. Um, but in general, you'd wanna go back from here and see if I can do this. Start with this for right now and click on reports and access it via that CSV download if you need the full option from there. Um, and so it looks like I answered that piece that took care of it. Um, if you're using it in Google Classroom, I can show you what that looks like. So if I have a class in Google Classroom, you'll see classwork here. So anything I've assigned will show up within Google Classroom here. If that's the full um, kind of 2.0 version, for example, the safety and the life sciences version, you'll see a link for students. So far, no one's done this. I just assigned this in a demo the other day, but that would open up and students would access this page. They'd be able to kind of see the read. They'd be able to see the content and practice. And then you would get a score here um, for your students. You could actually go into this particular piece um, and view assignment and it would show you kind of who did what and where that works out. So all sorts of questions from there, but I think we've answered all of them. Um, please feel free to email us at support if you have any other ones, and we hope you join us for future webinars. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, everyone.